Hi, Megan. I was wondering if I could get um, some manicure and pedicure appointments next Friday, May 8th, by any chance? May, is that, no, May 7th, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. What time do you have available? Is there only one person can be in there at, a, at this, any given time? Is that how it still works? Okay, perfect. So what time? Um, what time do you have available? Perfect. Brenda? McDonough, M-C-D-O-N-O-U-G-H. Yeah. And um, just in the off chance, do you have anything tomorrow for manicure and pedicure? Okay, perfect. Friday, 11.30 is perfect. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, Mary Beth. Hey, Argy. I can't hear you, Mary Beth. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me, Mary Beth? Yeah, okay, I can't hear you, good enough. Let this be. Oh, there you go. Can you hear us? Hello? Hi, Augie. I can hear you. Oh, he can, hear, can you hear us arguing now? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he did, but we had to like. No, 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 no. Zoom. We're just. We're... Hi. Hey, Georgia. I'll show you. See, we clicked on. 
web camera. Okay. That's why. Okay. All right. It's over. So. Okay. Hello? No, Mary Beth, I didn't hear you argue. Argue. <laughs> well, I did, Mom, because it was on. Was it on? Oh, it's not right. Hello. Hi, Georgia. Hi. How are you? Okay, I'm seeing the ceiling. You had a nice beam. All right, there. there I am. There we Hello. go. You got me. Oh, yeah, looks okay. nice. Yeah, I had to put on something summery today. I know it's warm. It's warm. Yeah. It's nice. It's, it's beautiful. Behind. Yep, it is. Some people really like it. I think that's it, Mom. Okay. Turn this up all the way. All right. The max. How's your mom, Brenda? You know, Mirabeth, she's thank you for asking. First of all, um, she's really tired. Like yesterday, um, I got up there Wednesday at noon and she was just tired. She 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 was awake for a little bit um Wednesday evening. And then yesterday she was like out most of the day, but today she's had today she's awake and more alert, you know. So it's just kind of like she's definitely at the end, you know, she's at the end stage of her life. And so we just, you know, we take it day by day, right? Yeah, well, I hope that you're there when it happens. Yeah, you know, Mirabeth, it'd be really great if I could be there, but it, but, but you not, can't, you know, Mirabeth. So, exactly. Spend so much yeah. time. All my whole family spent so much time with her. It's just like when it's her time, it's her time. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Brenda, how old is your mom again? Ninety-seven. Okay. Yep. Hey, Mickey. Hi, Hi Mickey. Hello. Hey, guys. Hello, hello, hello. My mother's 99 and, you know, we keep thinking it won't be long, but she's totally fine. So <laughs> it's like, oh, she's like know. the Energizer bunny going on and on. I had a long talk today about all the family and everybody. So um, whatever, it's like, yeah. all right, who knew? Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Nobody in her family's lived very long, so. Her father died at 28 and her mother at 42. Wow. So um, her brother's alive, but he has dementia. We have to make sure you turn he doesn't. So, which is good. You know, she only has to be on a Turn the volume down to 30 on there. Where's the dial? Sit on the speaker in the middle. All right. Let's see. Right there. Uh, it's turned on the volume. Turn it down. Well, turn it down to 30. Yeah, I know. Just tell me where the dial is. It's on the speaker right there. What speaker? Right there. I don't know what's right there. The speaker that, yeah, <laughs> sounds like me talking to my it, son. Oh, it turned down the volume on this. And it, is this the dial? Yeah, got it. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna make a minor adjustment <laughs> okay. here. Can I, can, can I just um make sure everyone knows this meeting is recorded? <laughs> all, all the, all the in the middle. It's we haven't said recorded, good in too high yet. Well, it's too high, Shh. it's buzzing. It's me. Beth, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mick. Okay, do you know, there's a notch. There's a notch. You know, I hear Jenna topping right now. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jeanette. Hey, Jeanette. How are you? I just have to shut my flashlight off. Hey, Siri, turn my flashlight off. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> Boy, I never think of doing that. It comes on. I have no idea how it comes on. It drives me nuts. Well, she hasn't <laughs> shut off yet. Hey, Siri, turn the flash. I have to ask, you're right. I never thought of asking Siri to do it. She's not doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, oh, so I so much for that clue. I found another way to do it. Good. Here's Josh Bancroft. Oh, good. How's everybody? We're all good, thank you. How are okay. you? I'm good, thank you. A little windy for a walk, but I did a short walk around in town. Good for you. I want to check out the uh, new surf shop place. Right, yep. Was it that Vincent's? Yes, way back. <laughs> way back. It doesn't seem long ago, but I know it really was. So, yeah. oh well. Okay, I'm going to start the meeting. Hey yep. Guys. Happy Friday, okay. everyone. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi, Josh. So, I um, we're going to open the meeting at three thirty-three, and 
Um, I will accept the agenda as written unanimously, and I'm going to read the script. Um, and okay. Water. <laughs> okay. So, um, as a preliminary matter, this is Nikki Rowland, chair of the Commission on Disability. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mary Beth? Here. Here. Augie? Uh, Augie's here. Augie. <laughs> Georgia? Augie's here. here. And Jeanette? Here. Thank you. And staff, when I call your name, say you're here. Brenda? <laughs> hey, Nikki. Okay. I'm also here, part of it. Um, all right, so uh -huh. anticipated speakers on the agenda. I guess that's probably you, Josh. So are you here? I am here. Good. <laughs> At least I oh. think so. <laughs> um, so this open meeting of the Commission of Disability is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting of the Commission on Disability, it's convening on by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website is identifying how the public may join in. Participants may find information on the conduct of this meeting at that location. Each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. And that's that. So, um, the, um, Brenda, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Is, that, is, is there anything else on it? No, the first thing that's on it is um, the variance request for um, for um, 21 South Water. Okay. Um, well, there's also the minutes. You didn't say the minutes. Let's let's get to the minutes after we're done with the. Um, that's fine with me. Application. I just wanted to mention that's what's next, but yes. yeah, let's move. Thank you. I'm with you. Okay, so 21 South Water. Um, yes. The reason we are. Um, reviewing this application is because as you probably know by now, the, the, the restaurant has closed down and um, the Johnsons have bought the building and they wanna convert it from restaurant use to mercantile use or a retail store. And even though the restaurant was able to get approval from the state to um, use the second floor space without accessible access, um, because of the change of use from re from restaurant to mercantile, they need to go back and get reapproved at the state for the new use. So, Josh, I don't know if you saw the application that, that Josh has submitted. It's a very good application. It's very thorough and explains it really quite well. Um, there are several things that, that they are applying for because of the change of use. And I'm going to turn it over to Josh and let him explain and um, uh, tell the story more better than I will. So go ahead, Josh. All right. Thanks, Mickey. Well, actually, I'll uh, pull up the application right now and share my screen if that works with everyone. Sure. Okay. So again, just as Mickey said, so uh, 21 South Water Street, you know, Back in the day, it was Vincent's Restaurant, which is a two-story restaurant. More recently, uh, from 2015 to 2020, it was Station 21. And now it's uh, under new ownership, and it's going to be converted into the uh, Nantucket Surf Club's uh, new location. So if you're not familiar with the Surf Club, they're uh, stores selling primarily beachwear, uh, towels, uh, surfboards, things of that nature. And in terms of the uh, physical changes to the space, um, the physical changes are really negligible. They're just putting in some new floor tile. There's a new door they have to put in uh, between the, the kitchen and the uh, existing public space just for the health department. But in terms of construction, it's almost nothing, at least intentionally. They're spending like $3,000 or something. So really all the changes were just as Mickey said, which were, you know, we, we initially weren't sure actually when we looked at this application, whether the change by itself would trigger by 21 CMR compliance, because uh, the, uh, the cost threshold is obviously much uh, far below 30% or 100K. And it's also, you know, changing from a, you know, a, a public use to another public use. And 521 CMR calls for compliance when you're changing from private to public. 
That being said, obviously, you know, we looked at the original variants, which was given to Station 21 back in 2015 which included, you know, no, no elevator to the second floor, uh, dining space, uh, existing non-accessible bathroom on the second floor, not all the existing entrances are accessible. We looked at that and it's, you know, uh, make sure to dot our I's here. So we reached out initially to Brenda and Mickey and, uh, and then Brenda actually reached out to AAB on our behalf and the AAB basically told us, you know, the, the old variants was specific station 21 and we're going to need a, a new one for the surf club, which is, you know, how we got here today. Um, so basically we just put together um, the, the usual application package uh, specifically. Um, we found when we kind of sat down and looked at it, there's six exact sections of 521 CMR. We're looking for... Um, uh, relief from. Most of them are basically just copying the same relief from the uh, uh, from station 21, but those exact sections are, you know, uh, from uh, 7.1, which is that all uh, retail spaces uh, that are publicly accessible in the building need to be accessible. Obviously, in this case, uh, without an elevator to the second floor uh, where you know, the shop would be split between the first and the second floor. The second floor space wouldn't be accessible without an elevator. Um, 7.8, which says that all uh, public toilet rooms in a retail building need to be accessible. There's an existing accessible, uh, there's an existing non-accessible public toilet room on the second floor, which I'll show you in the plans that they're hoping to keep. Um, and then, uh, you know, 20.11.1 and 25.1, that all public entrances need to be accessible and that uh, where that more than one means of egress are required, all those means, at least two means of egress that are accessible are required. Um, the existing, um, there are two existing uh, accessible doors to the building off of South Water Street, which again, I'll show you in the plans and, and photos shortly. Um, they're, you know, they, they're power assisted doors, they have compliant thresholds um, uh, there. Um, so they comply with, and they, they've been used for, you know, how long they've been there. And to our knowledge, I haven't been any complaints. They are sort of the space in front of them on the exterior of the building isn't quite level, which it should be. It's sort of, it's, it's brick, it goes right into the public sidewalk and it's sort of slopes weirdly in you know, typical Nantucket sidewalk condition. So there's some existing railings there um, to help with that. Basically, we're looking to keep, accept those ent those accessible entrances the way they are now. And then obviously, you know, uh, 521 CMR 28.1, which is not providing an elevator to the second floor. So I'll take you through the uh, floor plans, which again, in terms of the physical changes aren't much. Uh, this is the existing um, uh, restaurant layout, which was, so we have our South Water Street, you know, here's uh, on the site. So we have South Water Street where obviously the public entrances are. And then we have, um, let me get your guys' lovely faces off my screen so I can see. <laughs> there, there we go. All right, and then we have South Beach Street off the back, and which is basically just a, a glorified alleyway. Um, so the all the all the public access is off South Water Street. All the sort of service access is off the back. So in terms of public access and accessibility, we're really concerned mostly with this side of the building. In plan, we have our existing um, uh, what's considered the main entrance. Station 21 didn't really end up using it as such, but we did apply for it as the main entrance is this door um, off the front of the building, which is not accessible. It's about six or seven inches above the sidewalk and the building on all four sides is right on the property lines. Um, so we have our non accessible kind of main entrance uh, and then we have our two accessible and kind of power assisted doors with the funky sort of slightly graded uh, entryway in front of it. Um, so we have the one, one door that uh, grants access into the existing restaurant space, which will be turned into the retail space. And then we have a second accessible door, which goes into an existing um, basically takeout counter for the restaurant, which uh, the surf club is basically looking to lease out the existing kitchens on the first and second floor at some point to new tenants. So they may have a, 
a takeout you know operation in the future that they won't operate themselves but it'll be in the building but in any event um we're not really requesting any relief for the food service operation because the public it, it should already be accessible so it's really just the store that that needs our attention so again they'll be taking out the kind of all the seats and the, and the bar and um you know, they're just going to convert this again, some new floor finishes, maybe, but they're basically going to keep the same space, same, same doors, same existing accessible um, public toilet room on the first floor. So this is really all of our public spaces. This is, you know, the commercial kitchen. This is all employee only service space at the back. And then we have our second floor. Um, there's an existing stair. Uh, so got compliant nosings, compliant handrails, uh, providing access from the first floor to the second floor. It's a little atrium space. The second floor looks down on, on the first floor. And it was previously a secondary um, seating space, which uh, uh, part of the variance granted for Station 21 was that they allowed them ultimately to have this secondary public dining space up here without an elevator and with this existing toilet room not being accessible. And similar to the first floor, just another commercial kitchen up here, kind of service support space in the back. So it's really the front of the building where the public is allowed. And same thing, again, no real physical alterations here. They're just, you know, they're removing the tables. They're going to put some new, some new shelves on. All the shelving itself will be arranged with the necessary clearances and, and whatnot. And then some photos just to give you um, a little more reference. So here's the front of the building off of South Water Street. So here's the uh, existing non-accessible main entrance, which is sort of the storefront entry. And our two accessible doors are off to the side here. I'll give you, I'll show you another zoomed in photo. Um, this would be the south side of the building. So which is really just a little alleyway between this building and the, uh, and the neighboring building. Um, this is actually, this alley is really all right on the, uh, this is all the neighbor's property right here because the 21 South Water building is right on the lot line. Uh, this is another uh, public, it's not really an entrance, it's more of just an extra exit door that is, but it is for public use and it's not accessible. It's a foot and change off the ground. There's a little step here. Um, so that is uh, tied into the variance for uh, the accessible entrances and this is just the back of the building with the service entrances which again the 521 cmr won't comply because they're not meant for public use um, here is more of a close-up of the uh the existing uh, entrances off the front so you can see the the non-accessible main entrance is really just right next to the accessible entrances so we have the, um, the controls for the power assisted doors. So this one leads into what's gonna be the retail space. This one leads into what's gonna be the little uh, takeout counter space. And you can see it's not you know, quite flat here, which, which it would have to be to meet uh, code on both sides of the door. It's not much of a slope. You can get a wheelchair up it, um, uh, but you know they, they have the power assisted doors. They have the existing, handrails so it just sort of is really just is what it is physically because without kind of getting permission from the town to totally rework the sidewalk there's not much else we can do um but just kind of keep it as it is and these are just some uh, photos of this the existing stair uh, going to the second floor so just you know standard carpeted nosings uh graspable handrails and uh, just a shot of and they have some some junk on the first floor right now because they're getting ready to move in. But this would be standing kind of in the front of the first floor looking up at the two story atrium. So it's a it's a nice cool little space, it's a glass balcony from the second floor looking down. And uh, yeah, again, so at the end of the day, they really just want to. Um, so when we talk to um, uh, Mickey and Brenda sort of offline uh, with with the Johnsons a couple weeks ago, you know, obviously the concern would be if we if we did not put an elevator into the second floor, how would we ensure that it's the same? It's not going to be a detriment to people with physical disabilities if they can't get to the second floor. Make sure it's the same experience for everyone, because obviously we have to tailor it a little differently for the retail store than was done for the restaurant. 
And what we really uh, came up with, and again, we welcome any and all further suggestions, but uh, you know, after sitting down with the owners, I put together a, a little action plan. So the idea would be that, you know, uh, the first floor would be fully accessible. Um, and uh, we're gonna have, uh, and then, you know, you wouldn't, you would have the, the, the stair with the accessible handrails, but obviously a person, a wheelchair a bound person uh, couldn't be able to navigate them. So the idea would be any merchandise that would be on the second floor is either also available on the first floor, or if it's not basically making a designated shelf uh, close to the main entrance somewhere over here that would have at least one sample of anything being t-shirt, paddleboard, sunglasses, anything that is potentially on the second floor for display, but not on the first floor, you would have one physical sample. And then at the same location would be an iPad uh, with, a, with a dedicated link to the store's website. So it'd allow anybody who, who can't make it up the stairs, whether it's they're kind of looking at a physical sample of what's upstairs, or if they're perusing the website, which has their full inventory, they could basically do um, look at it here and then, you know, very, you know, the good analogy would be a shoe store and there'll be a employee here at all times. And if they find something down here that they like, or if they find something down here that, you know, it's not in their size and the, the extra size, whether it's a, a t-shirt or a paddleboard is on the second floor, uh, the, the employees will, you know, happily go upstairs, grab that for them and just, just give them anything they need. Uh, so the idea would be that there would be no real reason necessarily to, uh, for a physically disabled person to have to go to the second floor. The idea being they can come in the first floor, look at the full inventory, get whatever merchandise they need, kind of have as close to the same experience as possible, and not at the end of the day have to put in an elevator, which they just, again, con construction budgets, almost nothing. So they're just kind of hoping to move in. Uh, so they don't want to put the elevator in uh, if, if it's not going to be substantial benefit. So uh, I could keep going on, but um, kind of let you guys just uh, take a look and let me know your, your thoughts and, and your questions and we'll just uh, have at it. My question, Josh, would be that uh, to make sure that staff mm -hmm. are aware of the obligation that if somebody sees something and can't get to the second floor that they are cheerfully willing to go up and peruse what's up there for the client who is unable to get to the second floor. Yep, that is that is which that, can't be put in the paper put in the paperwork, but you know that is a that is a concern. It has been an issue. Uh, well, uh, yep. To that note, we we actually had the. Um, we had the owners put together a little action plan, which we kind of cut and pasted for you here. And it's, right. you know, again, they can reword it as needed, but yeah. they're definitely, right. it's going to be part yeah. of store policy. The employees are going to know that. Right. They're going to have to do that. And, you know, yep. and we're That's also going to post a sign basically right here next to the door so that any uh, disabled person who comes in, it'll be like, hey, if you need any help, you know, basically ring the bell. Right. No, that's great. That's great. Josh, um, I think we also discussed like having signage for um, just like when it, when anybody comes in the store, here is a sampling of what we're offering. I think at one point we were talking about um, having like that separate section that you pointed out mm -hmm. and having a rack there or having shelving there or something, but recognizing that shelving or rack as this is a sample of what we have upstairs. So um, is that still going to happen, Josh? Yep, that's going to be, yep, we're going to whatever whatever signs and at some point it, you know we can run the exact wording of those signs by you but right. anything yeah. relating to the, the official policy uh, where the rack is whether we're putting it over here on the rack itself like it's going to be made very aware in writing and, and obvious to anyone coming in like here's the situation if you need any help because we definitely don't want anyone coming in looking up at that nice second floor and being like i wish i could get out there it's like right. nope nope here, here it is uh, you need help just uh, just ring the bell or you know just shout across the room because it's not too huge <laughs> <of a piece. laughs>
So Josh, I've got a couple of questions. Um, the existing, or yeah, the main front door that it's, um, you know, in the center of the building, essentially, is that going to be considered like the, will that be open in use during this main season? And um, is that gonna be the front door? And what, how, how does the other door be, be come visible and you know apparent that we're going to have that, that that's the accessible door i believe their intention is to have this be the sort of main door um so this will be i think they picture keeping this open really all all summer long unless it's raining so i mean, we're hoping just because it's you know right next to it and we have and we can ultimately if, if we need to apply to to the hdc to post a you know, appropriate signage, if we can find a good spot for it, or at the very least, just maybe stick something on the inside of the door. But uh, you could see at least in this photo here, they're really right next to each other. And we have the, the, the control switches, which again, aren't, you know, <laughs> you know, necessarily compliant signage, but it's, you know, it, the idea would be if you're coming in and you realize you can't take the step, you don't have to look far before you see the universal accessible sign and that'll give you an indication. All right, here we go. I think it would make me feel better if there was a, a pretty visible sign right at the front door mm -hmm. pointing yeah. to the accessible entrance. And I think that's even part of the code, the 521 CMR, is that um, any entrances that aren't accessible, you have to direct the person to the accessible entrance. Mm -hmm. All right, we can, you know, we'll take a look at that then and we'll try yeah. to find a good spot for it. Yeah. Which I'm sure we'll manage. Yeah. The other question I have is um, we had a conversation with, um, I guess, you and the owners about what, what to do in the interim before they get approval from the state to, 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 um, to open the store without access. And we talked about measures they would take to not another one in particular was to not use that door at all. Um, so what's the status with that um, discussion? Uh, yep, Mickey. So what we ended up doing is before we kind of submitted this to the AAB, we submitted a separate change of use permit application to the building department, with, which I can actually forward to you for reference. Um, so in that change of use permit, where we basically applied for the change for the restaurant to the retail, we, we stipulated in, in our narrative, which we then stamped that Basically, it's going to be what we said. They're going to rope off the stair to the second floor, and they're going to put a piece of, whether it's like a fixed table or something, in front of this door so people can't go in it because they do want to at least keep the door open just for air and you know COVID and all that good stuff. So in the interim, and again, I'll, I'll follow, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, the document, uh, Mickey. But yeah, so basically, they're just, no, no public until this variance is approved. No public access up here. They're probably just going to dump the excess merchandise up here and just let uh, employees only. And then the uh, first floor door again. They're hoping to, you know, keep it open, but they're going to put some kind of, yeah, not something more substantial than a rope, like we talked about, like a, a table or a desk, something that would even if the door is open for for airflow, uh, it would at least you know. People aren't just nobody's nobody's going to come through this door. It's it's going to be all through this accessible door and, until the variance is approved. And do you know? Um, first of all, what, have they have they reviewed that? Have they issued your change of use with that? Uh, no, we haven't. Uh, not yet. We submitted it on Monday, so hopefully we're hoping sometime early next week uh, they would you know approve that. And you know once they approve it, I'll definitely let you know. And if you you guys want to stop by at any point between when the when the permit is issued and before the variance to kind of put your eyes on, eyes and eyes on and make sure it's it's being done exactly as it said. Again, the, they're going to do it. I mean, they know they have to, and I think they're happy to do it. But yeah, but that'll be the plan, you know. And for some reason, if the variance isn't approved, that'll at least be the, be the plan through the summer. <laughs> but but the hope is, you know, the hope is that they can open the first floor for now. Basically, as soon as we get this change of use permit, open the first floor, block this entrance, block this exit. We actually had to do a separate code analysis to make sure 
uh, that we could get away with only having the one public way out, um, which um, thankfully we can because the occupant load will be low enough. So that'll be the plan until probably at least through May um, is to just have this be the only public door into the retail space, have no public access to the second floor. Mm -hmm. And then if all goes well, if, if the variance is reviewed by AAB and approved at the meeting on the 24th, then that would let them basically open, open the whole show for, uh, for, the, uh, for Memorial Day weekend, provided that you know, everything's in place for the variance. Um, a quick question. Um, you said that right now they're not openly seeking um, a tenant for the restaurant part on the main floor. I think they have someone in mind or there's like okay. a deal going on, but I don't think they have anyone. I don't think they have anything specific yet. What, what it okay. sounded like is they're going to get more of like an actual some kind of like I heard sushi at some point. So maybe right. that's, that's it. So kind of like a okay. sushi -ish restaurant down here that's takeout only, in which okay. case you, know, you come in through the accessible door, you pick it up and you leave. Right. And right. the second floor kitchen, which is its own thing, might be like yep. a catering service is what I last heard. Again, I don't know if they have actual tenants lined up. It sounded like if okay. the deal's not done, one might be pending. But I mean, that, that, that's the plan last, last I heard from them. Okay, thank you. Is that is that section the existing kitchen that you're looking at on the first floor and that whole takeout window? Yep. So far, is that um, according to what you're hearing? Does that require updating of any of the permits, or is that good to go as it is? Uh, that should be good to go as it is. Uh, you know, it'll be part of the since it'll be takeout. It's still part of the the whole building will be changing from assembly A2 use, which is the restaurant, to mercantile M use. Since this will be take up, that'll be part of it. So we did look at this space in regards to 521 CMR to make sure it checked out. And basically, as long as this, this entrance is, you know, accepted as being an accessible entrance, you know, we're good because we only need the one way in. It'll be fully accessible. So but it'll just be in and out. What about the slope at the door? Shouldn't that get blessed too as a new use? Uh, yep, so definitely. So that'll be, you know, same thing. It's not, you know, I don't think that they're not opening the takeout, I don't think anytime soon, but yes. Yeah, so the, the slope in front of the door, that'll have to be blessed mm -hmm. um, for this door to continue to be considered accessible. But if, if that is approved, then this door is accessible. And then that'd really be the only relief related to the takeout. Okay. All right. Um, so what you're looking for from us, of course, is the usual. We, you want to know whether we're in favor of this application or whether we're opposed to it. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll write a letter to the AAB um, one way or the other. Um, I, I just want to ask the, the rest of the commission if there's any other questions for Josh about this application. Not for me. I don't have any questions. You? Anything? Um, yeah, I was going to say that um, uh, that they should have a, uh, a little, like a wheelchair like sign that has an arrow point to the left to show what the entrance is. That's what they could do. Okay. Yeah, Augie, we're we're going to request that they do that as part. Yeah. Of yeah. Definitely. That condition. Yeah. So. Okay. So no other no no other questions. I, I'm curious about the cooking as with uh, merchandise around, the smell of it. I know I know maybe on the mainland, but that's not a very big uh, space, and that's one of my concerns. Um, and the other thing I want to know how they got. The, who were they got for those doors for three thousand dollars? It cost me two thousand dollars for a slider. So I'd like to know if so I could get them to come work in my house. <laughs> I can happily ask them. I just I think they, in terms of the quote unquote construction, I think they just, for better or worse, ended up doing a lot of it themselves. So um, the door might have been two grand, and then they spent a thousand on tile and. Again, I'm just going off the number they gave me. <laughs> so. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> okay. Um, so I want to accept a motion from somebody 
whether we're, um, we'd like to be in, somebody want to make a motion saying we're in favor of this application? Or is there a um, concern about it? Yeah, I do. What's that? Who, who is yeah, that? I, I want to. Oh, you said he wants to make a motion. He's in favor. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll second that. Okay, thanks, Georgia. Okay, so um, Brenda, are you, so in, in other words, the, the, the motion will be that we are willing to accept and um, support the application just as it's written, although we do, we would like to have a, um, a sign at the entrance pointing to the accessible entrance. So, Augie, was that your motion? It, yes. Okay. And can I just add to that and signage inside, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or on the door, yes. the leaves, right? Okay. Yes, I, I guess I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm confusing you. Um, signage inside, just um, letting people know what the policy is to accommodate anyone mm -hmm. um, who can um, negotiate the, the stairs to the second floor and where their rack is or their um, shelving is to show the samples of what they have on the second floor, the, um, on the first floor. And that, that signage also, correct? Yeah, that's a good, a good addition to the motion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion? Um, I'm gonna go, go by roll call, Mary Beth? Aye. Augie? Aye. Jeanette? Aye. And Georgia? Aye. And I'm also in favor. Okay. When do they plan on opening, did he say? May 21st or May something? Uh, they'd like to open the third, just the first floor, basically as soon as we get a, a permit for the change of use from the building department, which could be as soon as next week. In terms of opening the, the second floor and everything contingent on these variances, they're hoping to open as soon as possible, but basically right after we get the variance, which would be on the 24th. Really Memorial Day weekend, they wanna have the whole operation going. Gotcha. Thank you. Could, could I just ask a question, both with regard to this and also with regard to other variances as a general rule, mm -hmm. where there's a situation that a variance is granted, um, but as part of that various, you know, quote unquote, promises of, you know, goodwill and as we cheerfulness to help out people um, for things that they can't reach on the second floor. What's the recourse? if um, a person goes in and doesn't have a good experience and these promises promises aren't being um, lived up to, what is the recourse? Well, I would suggest the recourse would be a complaint would need to be filed with the AAB. Okay. Yeah. So probably formally in writing and um, they would follow up on that pretty quickly. Okay, just wondering, thanks. Brenda, but informally, they could say something to any one of us, or they could say something to the chamber, or right? The management or the store, yeah, or the management itself. The correct. Yep. Post yeah. something on Facebook will probably be the <laughs> most harmful thing they could do. Yeah, that was, that's a good idea. But, yeah, I mean that's how it works in today's world. Google. Yes, it is. Yes, it does. Ha hashtag. They don't. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure if if they don't follow through for whatever reason, it'll, it'll get to you guys. It'll it'll be heard. Yeah, people nope. will yeah. pay attention. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we have another one, um, and yep. this one is regarding one rugged road, the um, lighthouse school. And Josh, you'll have to explain this one even to me. What what is the um, the change that you're applying for as compared to what was approved before? So this one, I am actually not the project manager for it, Emeritus, it would be my colleague, Dimitri. I do know a little bit about it. If you just give me a second, I can try to pull the drawings up. And I believe it had to do with, um, they're putting in a new ramp or altering a ramp, but bear with me for 30 seconds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I gotta, I gotta get on the phone call for one second. I'm sorry. I'm gonna mute. Oh, we're with you. Okay. 
Can the rest of us be heard? Yeah. Yeah. I think I can hear you, Miriam. Okay. So, Josh, I don't, this is the first time I met you, but just wondering if you heard what went on in Lincoln, Nebraska with other Joshes. Uh, oh. I hadn't. Is it you have it? Oh, I should just, be concerned about? Just, just Google it. It was some crazy thing that some guy named Josh who lives in Nebraska made a challenge about a year ago that they were going to have a battle with every Josh who would show up to see who got to keep the name. They were fighting with um, styrofoam uh, pool. What are those things called? Wands or noodles. Yeah. Noodles. <laughs> and some little four-year-old um, they called little Josh was crowned the king and able to keep the name Josh for the next year. And apparently all the rest of you are supposed to rename yourselves. But Google it. It looked, it looked like a lot of fun. Apparently a ton of Josh's showed up. Okay, well, I just like to submit, I was not given an opportunity to compete, so I'm, I'm going to like... Uh, Keep your name? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to attest that. I'm, I'm, but it might be than, fun I'm more than welcome to, to challenge little Josh to a, to a pool noodle fight. It might be fun to think about what you would choose if you had a choice, you know, Fair if enough. you had to do that. What name would you pick for yourself, uh, you know? I don't know. Should I pick a name I think fits me or should I pick a name I think is cool? Hmm. Uh, definitely what you think is cool. Hmm. I have to give that some thought. Give it some thought. Yep. Have a, have a few, have a few uh, sips of scotch. <laughs> I definitely. See what I, you can see where my mind wanders. It's after four yes. on a Friday. I'll yes. be honest. You know, some, my mind's been wandering brilliant. there earlier yes. and earlier during the week recently. <laughs> <laughs> this is the great time of year for us is uh you know everyone's panicking because they want their stuff open for memorial day so oh, yeah um, yeah well, we do our best <laughs> just yep. always remind myself that this time last year we thought we were all going to be unemployed so how, how that turned around quickly with the construction <laughs> industry mm -hmm. yeah. sure it it's sure has involved. so josh the um application you've already filed it with the aab yep Correct. Okay. Yep. And we'll write a letter, a letter of support and we'll get that out on Monday. And the application is going to be reviewed May 24th, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. So the application yep. for 21 South Water, sh it should be heard the 24th. Yeah. Displace the paperwork, which they have done more than once in the past. Um, the uh, the application for one rugged road is just an amendment, so that one should be heard earlier at the meeting on uh, May 10th. And just I'm actually perusing the application now because Demetri and I were actually yesterday kind of going to town on these two applications, trying to get them out the door. We're sort of racing each other. Uh, let's see. So I'm I'm sorry I had to step away, but but did they did we vote on on the rugged road? No, no we talked about pool noodle fights. <laughs> <laughs> so we we still need to do that. It sounds like. Yes, we do. Okay. Did so? Did you explain the application, Josh? Uh, no. Uh, but yeah, again, I apologize. This one wasn't wasn't mine. No, it wasn't Meredith's. But I'm. Uh, let's just go through it together. I can. I have the application in front of me. I can uh, share my screen again. That'd be great. Okay, one rugged. <sighs> okay. Okay. So let's. So there was, I believe. So there was an a variance that was already approved for. The building, which I believe was a variance to only have one accessible entrance. So this is a <laughs> school, I believe. Um, I think it's kindergarten through middle school age, if, if I remember correctly. And um, it's a multi-story building. They're putting classrooms on the first floor, I believe, classrooms in the basement and administrative spaces on the second floor. 
if I remember that right, yes. I think that's correct, Josh. Uh, yep. All right. So, yeah, so I believe the variance which was granted was to have um, one accessible entrance to the building. I think what ended up happening was it may have gotten to and been approved by AAB before you guys were able to take a look at it. And then I, you guys might have taken a look at it and felt that it should have been moved. Um, so this is an amendment to do just right. that. So did we originally approve the covered, I mean, the um, accessible entrance as the front door up by the covered porch? I don't remember that. J Nikki, when we, we visited there with, um, with um, Matt, yeah. I believe it was Matt, and we went over, they were asking us like, what is the best way to make this building accessible? And obviously the front door always seems like the most, ex was where the, um, you want everybody to enter a building is through the front door. However, the back door was really, the back entrance seemed to be much more suitable to um, put a ramp there. It was closer, I think, to parking. It was closer to the school itself. It would just seem like this seemed like the, like the best location for us to put a ramp and for to have an accessible entrance. And they were going to make that rear deck. I think that we're going to raise the deck, I believe, so it would be flush with the first floor level. Am I correct on this, Josh? I believe so. I think that, and I think another thing was, Mickey, that they were going to have some kind of classroom facilities on the basement floor, and they were going to have administrative offices on the second floor. So there was going to be no access to the basement, but whatever they could do in the basement, they were going to be able to do upstairs or something, make that accommodation. So I think that was why originally we went out there. Um, right was yes. to talk about all the accessible features. Josh, if you could go to the site plan, mm -hmm. that shows the relationship. There's in circle, point to the building, yeah, because th that makes it fairly clear that the, that the back entrance right. is, the more, is, the, is closer to the parking, is closer to the other school, the, and the front covered porch entrance really doesn't help too much in terms of accessibility. Mm -mm. I think that was our yeah. rationale behind putting it on the back porch rather than the front porch. Um, I'm also looking at the um, the floor plan that you had up earlier, and it does show. I don't think they're going to raise the deck. They're not proposing to on this application anymore. It looks like they're going to leave the deck where it is, but build a ramp, essentially overlay a ramp onto that deck to get you up to the floor level of the main first floor. Um, so say that again, please, Mickey. Well, there's also a there's a an elevation, the um, east elevation, Josh. You see yep. that? It shows. Um, that's it right there. So that shows you the ramp that they're putting on top of the deck. The deck is about six inches below or so the, the main floor level. So they need that ramp and the railing in order to get up to the level of the main floor. Got it. But it all looks like it's it meets um, 521, the code, and they're gonna replace the door. I think there was a question about the threshold bump on the door. It sounds like they're gonna replace that and put an accessible door there. So yeah. yep. what, was the, what was the use gonna be in the basement? that wasn't accessible. I believe it was additional classroom space. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. So yes, and sorry guys, I'm actually texting my, my colleague right now who's off today, but he basically said, whatever you guys recommended after your meeting, we ended up doing that, if that makes sense. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> If it's classroom space and you have a handicapped student who can't get down there. Uh, yeah, but, I believe that was part factored into the original variance sure. was that okay. this, this space would not be accessible. I, I presume with, you know, accessible handrails on the stair and that right. the um, right. first floor space would be accessible and the um, 
Gotcha. Any tutoring spaces could also happen on the first. So I believe everything that is not in these plans um, that does not comply, I believe was covered under the original variance. And this amendment is just basically following the, the recommendation you guys had after your last visit, which I think dealt with the, the, uh, the deck and the ramp. So this deck would now be accessible. So that as part of your accessible entrance, you know, the, the, you can get to the deck, the students can be out there, and then you can also get from the deck into the building and you get the best of both worlds. Josh or Brenda, okay. you got it now. <laughs> the, I'm looking at that floor plan, that accessible entrance, the red square there, um, is that a, don't we, are we, don't we need a larger platform there than what's shown? Uh, I believe since this is a, a 120 slope, so it's not a, it's just an accessible walk, in which case we only need the, uh, we just need like a standard level landing. We don't need the full five foot by five foot. If, if this were a 112 ramp, we'd have the, you know, four feet clear between handrails and the handrail extensions and the five foot by five foot landings. This is just a gradual 120 slope without handrails, and then it's just enough clearance to get through the door. Well, that's interesting. So the ramp is what requires the platforms, the top and bottom of each ramp. Uh, yep, exactly. I mean, you're always you're always going to need a level a level spot, you know, in front of the door, which yeah. is obviously not the case. 21 South Water. You're going to need that no matter what. But yeah, the the big, you know, the five foot by five foot landings. Those are pretty much always. The ramp itself and then whenever you like this ramp for example this is the 112 so that's got your handrails on both sides a 48 inch minimum clear maximum 30 feet run when you have 120 or less basically can be as long as you want you don't need handrails you just put a little curb at the side so people don't roll off i guess you technically need a guardrail on the side if you uh the drop was more than 30 inches but Yep, so yep, so that's the plan. So everyone yep. can get to the deck, everyone can get to the first floor. And it's, it surprises me a little that you don't need a greater um, landing, like for turning radiuses and and I mean mm. like about a three foot square platform. This should be assuming this door is three feet. This is probably um maybe close to four feet by five feet okay well, so okay. not quite a turning radius but if we're going off the door approach mm -hmm. um so and, again i haven't looked at it too closely but it's and what about the push the clearance to the is it the push clearance to the right of the door yeah, I think this, so this would have to be power assisted because um, we don't have the, um, okay. for a push side clearance, we need at least 12 inches of space. Right. So well, I don't, but if you have the uh, power assisted um, operation, you don't right. need I don't see the note for the power assisted operation. So that's something that we should um, ensure is being put in place. Mm-hmm. Um, does anybody else have any questions about this application? No, I'm just concerned no. about your concerns. If you've gotten the answers to what you were appropriately that you um, were asking Josh about this door and the turnaround. Yeah, I think, as soon as they put the, make it a, a power assisted door, it, it makes it much simpler for everybody to use. So um, I think that would be, uh, that would alleviate my concerns about the clearances and the platform. So then should we have it that it's going to be a power door written into this uh, well, order or whatever? We, we can make it part of our motion to make sure that it is, or to a request that it is anyways. Okay, thank you. Yeah, anybody else? So no. none, um, do I have a motion on this one to a to um, approve the application with the inclusion of, of a power um, a operable doorway. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor, starting with you, Mary Beth? Aye. Foggy? 
Aye. Jeanette? Aye. Georgia? Aye. And I'm in favor also. So Brenda, is that clear what we're looking for? Mm -hmm. I think um, one of the things that wasn't addressed in the application was the power door, correct? Seems like it. I think that's the only um, amendment to the application, right? Yeah. Okay, I got that. Our only condition on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Josh, thanks for coming and helping out. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for your time. Uh, have a great weekend and have a great stay weekend. Sober. All right. <laughs> thanks, <Yeah>. Josh. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So back to our, which I don't have the agenda. Is there anything else on the agenda? No, there isn't, Mickey. Nope. Oh, that's it. Except for the minutes from the last meeting. Yeah. Any comments on the on minutes? No. Nope. Motion, motion to approve the minutes that they're written. So moved. Second. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor, Mary Beth? Aye. Augie? Aye. Jeanette? Aye. Georgia? Aye. I'm in favor. Okay. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about? No. All right. Does anybody remember May Day um, celebrations way I, back in the day? Vaguely, I remember a maypole. Flowers on the door. You had what? A maypole with like streamers and you sort yeah, of danced we had, around yeah, it. Right, exactly, Mary Beth. We had uh, maypole yeah. with streamers. It was a long time ago that I remember that, but I don't know that they do that anywhere anymore. But well, anyway. I never, I never did. Mundane. That's because you're too young, Mickey. You so. can go to Catholic but you're young too, you Mary Beth. So. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank We're done. Good luck, everybody. God bless. Take care. God bless, everybody. Hey. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, Brenda. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. We're ending. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean.